reply that I want to give on behalf of the relativist, and there are sort of, I think, some strains of this in Rachel's piece, but I want to make it explicit so we're sure we're dealing with the best version of the argument, um, is to try, to try to draw a line between uh, moral disagreement and non-moral disagreement. Um, what explain, what's the difference between the two? Uh, one suggestion here is that um, moral disagreements are unique in that they're irresolvable. Moral disagreements, unlike other kinds of disagreements, no matter how much we try to work out our differences, they just can't be resolved. So this distinction between irresolvable and resolvable disagreement for many contemporary relativists is the basis of a sort of more sophisticated argument from disagreement or difference for relativism. Um, and as we'll see, this version of the argument doesn't claim that any disagreement whatsoever always should lead us to be a relativist about the domain being disagreed over. Instead, it's a certain kind of disagreement that's particularly apt for a relativist treatment. So this is to help the relativist avoid the geography counterexample, right? Um, so what is this resolvable versus irresolvable stuff? Well, suppose the two parties, and here we can start talking about not just cultures, but individuals too, we'll be sort of neutral on that. Suppose two parties disagree over the truth or falsity of some moral proposition, proposition P. Um, we can name it. We don't have to know what it is, some proposition P. This disagreement is either resolvable or irresolvable. Now, a resolvable disagreement, here's how we're going to define it, is a disagreement that would disappear or dissolve or be resolved if both parties agreed on all the non-moral propositions, I'll say more about that in a second, if they were using their words in the same way, and if they were thinking rationally. If all three of those conditions were met, then this sort of disagreement would disappear in that one party would be, so to speak, converted to the other side. We may not know which would be converted, but eventually there'd be an agreement. Uh, whereas there was a, a dispute beforehand, once the two sides got together, hypothetically, if they were had an agreement on all the non-moral propositions, if they were using their words in the same way and both thinking rationally, they would be able to come to an agreement. Um, what's a non-moral proposition? Uh, most importantly, perhaps, are like empirical facts, right? So in the case of geography, um, there were empirical facts that ancient scientists simply had not discovered yet um, that we have today. And that uh, the thought is that kind of dispute is resolvable in that presumably if they hypothetically were to learn these empirical facts, they would be uh, in a position to begin to change their minds. Um, if you brought, um, Newton didn't think the Earth was flat, but uh, Newton had a physics that is has been superseded, at least for sort of uh, the very small. Um, and if Isaac Newton was shown the mathematics and the physics uh, that um, justified uh, the revolution in in physics in the early 20th centuries, uh, in the early 20th century, and quantum mechanics and general relativity, um, and Newton was given enough time, the thought is he would come around, right? Um, likewise, um, you know, sometimes two parties disagree over something because one side is thinking or behaving irrationally. Um, and so that kind of disagreement still counts as resolvable so long as agreement would occur if they were thinking clearly um, and they weren't under the sway of whatever emotional influence or something was, uh, was causing their uh, resistance to coming around. The other kind of disagreement is irresolvable disagreement. And this is just a disagreement that would remain even if all three of those conditions were met. A disagreement is irresolvable when, even if both parties agreed on all of the empirical facts, 
there was nothing that one side was missing about you know physical reality that the other side had or vice versa um, they weren't using their words differently this wasn't a semantic confusion and they were both thinking rationally and weren't being like pushed by irrational biases or something nevertheless if the two parties just still were at a deadlock and couldn't come to an agreement then that disagreement would count as irresolvable so the irresolvable disagreement argument is what you can think of as a more sophisticated more careful version of the cultural differences argument two main differences one this version of the argument trades on irresolve on moral disagreements being irresolvable not just that they're disagreements it's a specific kind of disagreement irresolvable ones and the second thing is that this you don't need to necessarily anchor this to cultural relativism um, this argument uh, I think also works quite well for uh, differences among individuals um, so it's not a specifically an argument for cultural relativism it may be thought of as an argument for uh, relativism uh, in general so the first premise is just there are irresolvable moral disagreements whereas the first premise of the previous argument just said there are disagreements across cultures about morality right and that's uncontroversial this premise says there's irresolvable moral disagreements across cultures within cultures it's a specific kind of disagreement and that is going to require defense this is sort of like as we saw in the argument from evil when we make a premise um, stronger and we make the uh, subsequent argument stronger and more immune to counterexamples often that means that sort of ratchets up the amount of defense you have to give the premises they're no longer obvious once you make them immune to the uh, easy counterexamples so um, the second premise is just that if there are irresolvable moral disagreements then uh, those moral propositions are not objectively true or false conclusion therefore uh, moral propositions are not objectively true or false now this first claim there are irresolvable moral disagreements why well, think this um, this is going to be the defense of this first premise is going to be a, an appeal to specific cases of moral disagreement <clears throat> both within a culture and a, a between cultures that um, the relativists will want to convince us are cases of irresolvable disagreement so within a culture there are, i think are lots of good candidates for moral disagreements within a single culture that seem like they just can't be resolved within the united states if you think about the abortion debate i mentioned in class um debate over gun control um maybe the i think public opinion has been a little bit less stable on gun control uh, historically than it has been over abortion but both of these are historically debates that the public has been relatively deadlocked on for a long time something more recent if you think about debates over the ethics um, and politics of, of COVID um, you know there's a significant percentage of the country I think that's deeply deeply skeptical and maybe even resentful of uh, COVID restrictions of um, whether they're enforced by government or not some people feel very strongly about not wearing masks um, I personally think that it's all of our duty just as um, good citizens <laughs> good neighbors and good friends and fa good family members to wear masks and to um, if we ha haven't been vaccinated to stay inside and avoid large gatherings but uh, people in this country disagree about that and and that disagreement has not sadly has not resolved itself over the last year it's still there um, within uh, or across or between different cultures <clears throat> you can fill in some of the details here but some possibilities that occur to me are like very foundational principles um, that drive uh, a society's uh, politics and government or gov governmental structure um, and uh, and its overall values so if you think about like individualist cultures 
uh, versus co more collectivist cultures. N neither of these are absolute. No culture is entirely individualistic or entirely collectivist, but broadly some cultures prioritize individual autonomy over the collective public good. Um, and when the two come into conflict, I think our culture, it's fair to say, is one in which the individual uh, individual freedom tends to be um, more highly prized and highly valued and prioritized over uh, the public good when the two come into conflict as they do in, say, um, uh, COVID restrictions is, a, is an example of this. Um, democratic um, societies, democratic government structures versus autocratic ones. Um, you know, that's a political dispute, but it's also a moral dispute at bottom as well. It's a dispute over uh, rights, over whether um, individuals have the right to self-governance. Um, democracies think that every individual has a right to have some role in choosing their leader. Um, and uh, certainly within our autocracies, I, I don't know if, you know, Certainly not everyone in an autocracy supports the autocracy, but the, at least the autocrats that run an autocratic society uh, tend to think that autocracy is the way to go and that there is no such fundamental right to self-government. Government. Um, I'm not a political scientist, so I don't know for sure, but it seems likely to me that uh, there's more sympathy for uh, autocratic governments among the, the population in autocratic societies and probably more dis more sympathy for democracy within democratic societies. Um, how we interpret that, I don't know, but that suggests that there is a, a debate there. Um, finally, if you think about sort of broadly um, feminist or progressive or e egalitarian views of, of gender, and probably we could say something about race as well um, in, in some societies versus more traditional uh, patriarchal societies in which um, women are are sort of systematically subjugated right just as a part of the of the culture um, I think you know our society historically uh, was like that and arguably still has some pretty some pretty real uh, vestiges of the patriarchy today but I think it's also fair to say that we've made uh, progress in this domain not so for other other societies. They have um, they have uh, in, in embedded within their laws um, these kind of uh, patriarchal tendencies. So that seems like another kind of disagreement. Why think that these are irresolvable? Well, the thought is that in some of these cases they're so long standing. They're so long standing, and these days with the amount of the ease with which information can be uh, transferred, it's been decades now that the, the internet has been available and that entire populations have been able to find out about other values and find out about other ways of structuring society and see, you know, uh, in a live video what it's like to be in a more individualist society or a more collectivist society. and. You know, it remains to be seen, but I think that the relativist's gambit here is going to be that um, there isn't going to be much movement on a lot of these. Uh, converts aren't going to, uh, conversion isn't going to happen, um, or not much of it anyway. These are just basic clashes that, that can't be resolved.